Welcome to Worship with St. Andrew Lutheran Church in Beaverton, Oregon. I'm Pastor Robin Hartwig, and it is a gift to be able to gather with you for worship virtually until that day when we can come again together in the sanctuary face to face to hear the word and share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Whether you are an ongoing part of the St. Andrew community, or whether perhaps you have stumbled across, us, across this worship service on Facebook or YouTube, or had an email forwarded from a friend or family member, we are glad that you are a part of this extended community today. Thank you so much for being with us. Most of our communication is happening by email, so please feel free to send an email to the office if you would like to get on the email list, and lots more information is available at www.standrewlutheran.com. For now, I welcome you to join us in a moment of quiet, following which uh, we will participate together in Thanksgiving for baptism. And if you would like to have a small bowl of water with you, as Pastor Mark Brocker encouraged us last week, you are welcome to do that for the remembrance of baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and you planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in these fonts, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen want to share a bit of time with any children who are out there. You may literally be a child or you may be feeling young at heart. This time is for you to help us prepare for the hearing of God's word through the passages from the Bible. I wanted to share some of the symbols that are on the table that I have here, my little altar, and I wanted to encourage you to continue to look for symbols to place on your table, wherever you gather, whether it's a kitchen table or a coffee table or a bedside table, you get to be what we call the altar guild and you get to make the space in which we worship in your home. So today I have here a candle and if your parents are okay with having a candle lit, you can have a candle on your table. And when we get to the time of prayers, I'll also be lighting candles from this candle here that symbolizes the light of God in Jesus Christ and placing those here in the sand to represent those prayers. If your family likes to use candles, you can light candles for that prayer time. But maybe you could also use other things for those prayers like flowers, if you have flowers, or some green leaves, or oh, dolls or Lego characters, anything you want to place on your table to represent those concerns that we're praying for today. Also, I already referenced the water in the little font here, and you, you can have one of those on your table if you don't already. 
And if you'll be celebrating communion today, here I've got a piece of bread from my uh, kitchen, and you can have any bread from your kitchen. And I have some juice, some fruit of the vine, for the celebration of communion, which you can have as well. I also like to print out the prayer list of all of those people who we are invited to pray for. And if you've got prayer requests, you can send those in by email or phone to the church office so we can add them to our prayers. One other thing today that I have brought with me for my table is some people who I think may be kind of like shepherds in our time. You'll hear in the gospel lesson today from John, Jesus talking about being for us like a good shepherd. And even before Jesus was ever around, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, God has been described as being like our shepherd, meaning like if we're like the sheep, God loves us and cares for us and protects us and doesn't want anything bad to happen for us and even risks God's own life, just like Jesus did, to love and care for us. Shepherds were very, very common back in the time of Jesus. There were a lot of people who maybe spent the night with the sheep. They did, probably didn't get paid very much money, but they sacrificed a lot to care for the sheep and to take care of them. I was wondering who the people are in our time who are kind of like shepherds, kind of like Jesus, uh, showing love and care for the community. I thought of the people who are delivering packages. Maybe your family, your household has had some packages delivered while we can't go out to very many stores. And these people are taking risks to their own health to deliver packages and things that people need very, very much. For the first time, my household ordered some takeout food. We wanted to support some of the local restaurants. And do you know the person who delivered the food came so quietly to the front door and dropped it off? I didn't even hear them come. I never even got to see the face of the person. And so I printed out this picture from the internet of somebody also whose face I can't see, who's delivering food for people who need to eat. And that's kind of like a loving shepherd, like Jesus is for us. And then I thought about the people who are caring for all of the people in the hospitals and the care facilities. We have an elder in our family who's in a skilled nursing facility. Now she's in a hospital. And do you know there are so many people who are caring for her, her? I'll never even know what their names are, but I know that they hold her hand and they take care of her and they help her feel more safe. They're protecting her very life and trying to keep her safe. And so this is one person whose name I also don't know, who maybe works as a CNA, somebody who probably doesn't get paid a lot, but goes to work every day trying to care for people and keep them safe. So these are three of the prayers that I also have today that I am placing right here on my altar table as we gather. And I welcome you to continue to think about what are the things that you would like to have on your special table as we gather for worship today and in the, in the weeks to come. We'll continue now by hearing from the Bible, hearing some of the lessons for today. The first one is from the book of Acts chapter 2, and it talks about some of the earliest followers of Jesus after the death and resurrection of Jesus. It says, The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, 
they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them. But they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus begins his teaching to the disciples, talking about a sheepfold in today's gospel. A sheepfold, a place of shelter where all the sheep are gathered together. Our reading from Acts of the Apostles talks about the earliest days of the church after the death and resurrection of Jesus and says, all who believed were together. Funny how we can see or hear the same things we have heard time and time again in the past, but so somehow see or hear them differently in a time of global pandemic. When my spouse Janet and I see something on television, we find ourselves constantly noticing how close groups of people are standing in a movie or a TV series. We have finally now quit mentioning to each other how often we imagine that the TV or movie characters really ought to be standing further away from each other or at least wearing some kind of facial coverings. I find myself feeling a certain kind of nostalgia and deep missing or longing when scrolling through photos on my smartphone and if I happen to run across a gathering of 15 or more family or friends with arms around each other, sitting close together without another thought. More than a few of you have wondered aloud in my presence whether we will ever take a simple hug for granted again in the future, whenever we can finally share those hugs with anybody who does not live in our home. And I feel the same way. Every fourth Sunday of the Easter season, in our three-year lectionary cycle of pre-assigned readings, we hear about one of the passages from the Gospel of John in which Jesus compares himself to a good shepherd. If we ever long to be gathered together by a shepherding Messiah, this would be a year for that, wouldn't it? The stress in our society can be seen in the 80,000 people taking to the beach and ignoring social distancing guidelines last weekend. California Governor Gavin Newsom followed that action by shutting down all California beaches that had not already been closed and saying, the virus does not take the weekends off. The stress is real. 
the longing to be together is real. As our congregation continues to follow the directives of our governor and our state and federal health authorities to stay home knowing that it is saving lives, it is such a gift to have these online and telephone technologies that make it possible for us to gather together for worship because so many of us are feeling rather scattered from one another. These days are not easy. Among us are parents who are each trying to work full time from home in a way they never have before, while trying to be pseudo teachers for their kids and get them connected with all kinds of online educational opportunities, keep them out of fights, and keep them from getting kind of depressed. Among us also are kids who are missing out on lots of educational and social development opportunities, Adults struggling to feed their families with no job available to them right now. Elders who are locked down in assisted living communities and skilled nursing facilities or at home. Some wondering if they will live long enough to get to scoop up their grandchildren into their arms and hold them for a good long time. To be sure, some in our midst are counting more blessings than challenges during these days. Others are bearing disproportionate risks and disproportionate costs, such as the studies that were coming out this past week about the number of African Americans dying of COVID-19 so much higher than the rates of other groups who are dying and effect of long-term structural injustices. Over these weeks following the celebration of Easter, it has been encouraging to hear the stories again, to bear witness to the ways the earliest followers of Jesus who had experienced a horrific disaster, the public torture and murder of their spiritual leader, Messiah and friend, they themselves also fearing that they might be killed, somehow emerging on the other side of that disaster with a renewed sense of meaning and purpose and care for the most vulnerable among them. The book of Acts says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. It talks about how awe came upon every one of them because of the wonders that were being done in their midst. All who believed were together and had all things in common, it tells us, and that they would even sell their possessions and distribute the proceeds to all, anybody who had need for it. Day by day, they were spending time together in the temple, breaking bread at home, eating together with glad and generous hearts, praising God, and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. And all of this following an unspeakable disaster that they had never imagined. They were listening for the voice of the risen Christ. They were listening for their good shepherd, just as Jesus promised, and they were just making it up as they went along. When life seems so very different for so many of us than it did just two months ago, perhaps it can be reassuring to be reminded by passages such as these that the call to followers of Jesus day after day, year after year, century after century actually has not changed all that much. We are still called to devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching. We're just doing that through Zoom online gatherings and adult education at 10 a.m. on Zoom or by reading at home or watching movies about faith or listening to audiobooks. We are spending time in fellowship and prayer and breaking of bread through things like a virtual Easter brunch and happy hour gatherings that are now taking place in the hallways of assisted living facilities or at the end of neighborhood driveways. We are still engaged in fellowship with one another, but doing it in 
various ways like Zoom technology or good old fashioned letter writing and phone calling to remind people of how much we care. All who believed were together and had all things in common, the gospel, or rather the book of Acts says, and that they would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Our minister of music, Allison Katsafrakis, pointed out when our staff gathered for our weekly staff meeting by Zoom this week, and as we reflected together on this passage, she said the whole culture of what they were doing was so revolutionary. This is like a commune of sorts where they are 100% in together. She talked about our dominant societal mindset that sees the world as this is mine. And she said, this way of Jesus is a different mindset that sees that everything that God created belongs to all of us. It really hits home to me, she said, how revolutionary the whole message of Christ really is. Well, I suppose that many of us, maybe not, maybe most of us have not sold all our possessions and goods and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need, as it said in the book of Acts. However, I have had a handful of people talking to me about donating their stimulus checks to feed or house those in need. I've had people digging deeper to support the nonprofits and the ministries they care about, giving an enormous amount to the food pantry as our weekly running total shows. You all are engaged in caring for the community as they have need, and I have been observing you watching for the needs of those who are most vulnerable and oppressed. Although in one sense, everything has changed, in another sense, maybe nothing has changed. In the Gospel of John, Jesus compared his role to that of a good shepherd who calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. It rem remains the call of all those who would follow Jesus to engage in spiritual practices and to support one another in listening for and attuning our ears to hearing the voice of Jesus, our Good Shepherd, to watching closely for God's guidance as God continues to show up embodied in the world. Those earliest followers of Jesus did not know how to do it then, just as we do not know how to do it now. <laughs> they made it up as they went along. We are making it up as we go along. It is simultaneously one of the most challenging situations and one of the situations most filled with spiritual and relational possibilities that any of us are likely to experience in our lifetimes. Jesus promised in today's gospel lesson, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. It remains both our invitation and our call to participate in that abundant life and work together to share that abundant life with all, and yes, especially those who are the most vulnerable or in greatest need. I confess to not really feeling on most days like I have a whole lot of eloquence to put around this experience that we're going through, for many of us, we're just thinking as fast as we can. We're responding as fast as we can to the needs of any given day. But I am joining you in listening for the voice of Jesus because Jesus promised that we can hear that voice. Even in the times when we, like the little sheep, get lost, when we don't know the way, we can listen, we can watch. And God promises to keep showing up. At my best, I feel like on most days, maybe I'm able to say, ah, wait, listen, I, I think maybe that's Jesus, or I hear one of you saying that, or oh, look, maybe that's Jesus, or I hear one of you noticing where you might see the embodied presence of God in the world. This week in the Christian century, a pastor named 
Angela Denker uh, shared an article about the coronavirus pandemic exposing the myth of self-reliance. She talked about a dear elder from her community living in an assisted living facility, living more than an hour from a major city, and about the people who were there caring for Della and how much that meant to her as a pastor. I can relate, and I'm sure you can too, as we think about the elders who we can't see and whose hands we can't hold right now. She, Angela Dinker wrote, Meanwhile, the professional sports leagues are shut down, business conferences are canceled, and commerce has ground to a halt. Only the essential work goes on, much of it long disrespected, underfunded, and ignored. For one thing, she said, we can look around and notice that the people holding us together are those we have too often erased, the healthcare workers, the overnight grocery store stockers, the child care workers and teachers, the factory workers who make toilet paper and protective masks, the oldest and wisest among us. She said, my nurse friend and I told each other this morning that we were both walking around on the verge of tears so often these days. She said, we're crying out of fear and uncertainty and anxiety and lack of sleep, but also because of all the people we see who are refusing to give in to hopelessness, despair, and isolation. They remind us of what it is to be human. She says, God works mysteriously. In these days of social isolation, my faith is renewed by love by my parents dropping off gifts for the grandkids and standing in my front lawn at least six feet away and then going home to watch Jeopardy reruns together, by my church treasurer who called to tell me that someone had mailed in an offering, a harbinger of faithfulness and hope that the church would continue to renew life in the midst of death. I also felt like I was hearing the voice of Jesus in an article by Martin Marty, uh, or by Peter Marty, who talked about a book by Mark Dunkelman called The Vanishing Neighbor, The Transformation of American Community, in which Dunkelman describes the loss of friendship and familiarity that once constituted neighborliness, saying that Americans have become largely estranged from people who live next door, seldom talking with them and often not even knowing their names. But Peter Marty said, interestingly, the impact of the coronavirus on daily life seems to reve be revealing some renewed interest in the social benefits of neighborliness. He talked about a young woman who called up the activities director at a local assisted living center to ask if there were residents who would enjoy a visit from her two children. Yes, was the obvious answer. The coronavirus isolation meant the visit would have to take place through the exterior windows of the residents' rooms. The mom brought some dry erase markers for the activities director to pass around. 90-year-old Andy, Aunt Annie, and 7-year-old Gary used their own markers as they stood outside and played tic-tac-toe with some delighted se seniors on the other side of the glass. Another friend told Peter Marty about his cul-de-sac neighbors who have never really socialized until now. At 5 p.m. every day, neighbors pull their lawn chairs to the end of their driveways and share happy hour with people they don't really know all that well. Terry said, we're discovering friendship. It's a hoot. There's no way we would have done this without the confinement we've all been under. And Peter Marty said, kids around my neighborhood spend hours chalking the sidewalks with massive spring flowers, designs, and happy sayings. With so many neighbors eager to escape cabin fever and get out for a walk, all kinds of informal bonds are emerging as neighbors visit over the art displays. And in New York City, where doctors and nurses are working heroically long hours to tend COVID-19 patients, whole neighborhoods have been joining first responders to applaud healthcare workers as they swap out for shift changes. Yes, in so many ways, it feels like everything has changed. And yet with the inspiration of these kinds of creative efforts, 
perhaps the call to love our neighbors, to be Christ with one another, and to listen for the voice of Christ hasn't changed so much after all. Maybe our ears are still being attuned to listen, and maybe our hearts are just being open to respond in even more creative ways. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now enter into a time of prayer. I welcome you to silently add your prayers to the ones that I will offer or to say them aloud in the spaces that I provide. Be drawing many of the prayers from the prayer list that is provided in the weekly news, which is also available at the website. Oh, shepherding God, thank you. Thank you that you do not allow us to wander off without you coming after us again. Thank you that you do not abandon us alone in an overwhelming and scary world, but that you promise that we can hear your voice in the midst of any challenge or trial that we face. Help us, oh God, to attune our ears to your voice that we have come to know through Jesus and be with us now as we come to you in prayer. O oh, good and gracious God, we lift up today prayers for the church throughout the world as we seek to listen for your still small voice or your bold and screaming voice wherever it emerges. Be with the leaders of our congregation as well as give strength and wisdom to our Bishop Lori to our Oregon Synod staff, to our presiding Bishop Elizabeth, to all of those congregations partnering in ministry locally and around the world, especially Bethany Lutheran of Portland, Heavenly Peace Lutheran of Portland, and the Taiwan Lutheran Church of Beaverton. We pray also, God, for our interfaith partners in ministry, this day we lift up especially Masjid Omar Farouk. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those around the world who are struggling in response to the coronavirus, especially those who are sick, and for the families of all of those who are ill or who may be dying. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace and comfort, O oh God, for family and friends of Jeanette Green following her death, and for peace and comfort also for family and friends of Bill Ellis following his death. We pray, O oh God, for family and friends of Alan from Key, following his death. For all others who are grieving the loss of those they love, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for healing and recovery for all of those who have the coronavirus or any other illness or ailment, especially Justina Haley Hope, and for Hazel, and for Majel, and for those we name in silence or aloud now. God, in your mercy, hear our pray prayers. We pray for all of those who are invisible to us, but who are the shepherding presence of your love, for the delivery people who bring us packages of supplies, groceries, or food, for the healthcare workers, 
for all of those essential service personnel, for nurses, CNAs, doctors, and all healthcare providers. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all transit workers, for employees of the post office, for local, state, and federal leaders that you would grant your wisdom and guidance, and for the public as a whole, that we would listen for your voice first, to love our neighbor and ourselves as best we can. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For refugees and immigrants, for acceptance and safety in these days of fear and isolation, that you would help people of faith around the world to find creative ways to make a difference in the lives of refugees and immigrants at precisely the time that some of our standard ways of support are not available to us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for courage and protection for all military personnel, especially Justina Haley Hope, Evan, Dawson, Neil, Jeremy. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For thanksgiving, for the many graces that come to us every day, and in thanksgiving for the gifts of neighbors and friends who we are getting to know and learning to rely on, learning to appreciate in new ways, even in the midst of these challenging days. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, God, for the prayers of thanksgiving and the prayers of need and concern that are lifted up by all of those participating in this worship service locally or around the world that you name now in silence or aloud. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all these things and whatever else you see that we need, O oh God, grant us through the risen power of Jesus, the living Christ, our good shepherd and friend. Amen. So now as we transition into a time of sharing in the sacrament of communion from wherever we are, if you have not already had a chance to do so, I welcome you to prepare uh, bread or cracker, your, any fruit of the vine, juice or wine that you might like to use. And just as I have my kitchen plate and uh, a glass, your uh, what you put this on from your home is the offering that God will delight in today. As we do this, uh, we recall that most Christians, of course, throughout the ages have experienced the sacrament of communion in the context of an in enfleshed community, a body of worshipers gathered around a common table. Due to the extraordinary situation now caused by the coronavirus pandemic, we know we haven't been able to do that together in the traditional way. And so informed by scripture and church teaching, we, can, we do that now in creative ways, like all of the ministry we are needing to offer with one another. During these extraordinary times, so many of us are continuing to recognize that the community gathered in worship virtually is the body of Christ. And so we celebrate communion now as best we can online and look forward to the day we can gather again in the sanctuary to do that face to face. So my friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you and in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus took on flesh, and as your Son, born of Mary, was seen on earth and lived and served among us. Jesus opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life, so fulfilling your will and winning for you a holy people. 
grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these, your gifts of bread and wine, may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We remember now how on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we remember how again after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather all who share this one bread and one cup into the one company of saints to praise and glorify you forever. Through him from whom all good things come, Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the body and blood of Christ given for you. Welcome you now to partake of the elements or to share them with those who you're gathered with. I, here alone, am in solidarity with you who are also on your own sharing in these elements together today. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
take an opportunity now to share in the offering of ministry opportunities available to us as a community of faith. And you will find many of them in the weekly news, which is uh, available through the website, www.standrewlutheran.com. And it's also available by email. As long as we have your email address, we'll make sure you get a copy each week. A few of these that I will lift up for you. Uh, first of all, if you are having any challenges with connecting with any of the online or telephone worship services, just give our office a call or an email or either of our pastors, and we want to make sure that you get connected. That lot of information about that is provided here in the weekly news. And if nothing else, people can just call in to a phone number to hear the worship service. And also our Zoom gatherings are also accessible by just telephone. So please help us get the word out to anyone who may not yet be connected. Thank you so much for your generosity to of helping feed those in the community. Uh, to date, I see that we have raised 16,871 pounds of food, and this is now a Lenten and Easter food drive. Maybe it'll be a Pentecost food drive as well. And thank you for ke keeping up the generosity because we know that the need is really great. Speaking of great need, Cindy Stottle from the Sanctuary team has a very important article about particular needs we're finding out about in the Latino community. Uh, many folks in this community are not eligible for federal stimulus money and are facing a lot of hardships and there are giving opportunities and granting opportunities. You can find more information in the weekly news. Thank you to our Sanctuary team for that. Adult education is taking place online via Zoom. That's at 10 a.m. each Sunday. Information about how to sign in is available in the weekly news. And once again, that is available just by good old fashioned telephone as well. Names of some seniors who would appreciate hearing from you by letter or phone call are in here. And please just open your heart and mind to thinking about those who maybe are struggling a little extra these days and considering sending along a card or uh, giving them a call. This week, um, beginning uh, this Sunday during our virtual coffee hour times at 9.30 a.m. and noon, we'll be talking about the gifts and opportunities of reclaiming the lost art of phone calling. Also, uh, we'll have an opportunity to share other ideas that you are seeing of creative ways of being the church, being the body of Christ in the world, and in our very neighborhoods uh, along the lines of the, the sermon examples. Would love to hear some of the examples that you're experiencing wherever you live right now and in your communities. Uh, thank you to Michelle Sin, uh, who has begun putting some mental health tips into the weekly news. This is a part of the uh, COVID-19 Caring Ministries Coordination Team that we've just started with St. Andrew. So you can watch for more of those tips as well as we try to support ourselves and one another. A number of other important announcements you will find in here. Also want to just say a special word of thank you to all of you who uh, maybe you were offering plate donors and you've been finding ways to continue to contribute to this ministry by mailing in checks or by giving online. Uh, we know that for some folks, financial circumstances may have changed and we completely understand that. Thank you so much to those of you who are uh, supporting this ministry through your participation as well as your financial contributions. Those are the announcements I'm aware to highlight for this Sunday. And so at this point, I welcome you to receive the blessing and the dismissal and then simply settle in to receive the gift of the offering of the prelude music. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said, go in peace, share the good news, alleluia, and thanks be to God, alleluia.